With us now is CBS News political contributor and chief political correspondent for Slate, Jamel Bowie, and CBS News senior political ed editor, Steve Shigaris. They are both in Washington. Steve, we're not going to know the full content of the emails until they're released, obviously. But as we've seen it play out over the last 24 hours and really the drip of all of these emails, how does this continue to uh, affect Clinton's public image? Well, it reinforces and feeds this narrative uh, that at best she hasn't been totally honest uh, with the American people about her emails. Uh, at worst, that she's lied to everybody about this. And so at a point 77 days before the election, uh, you want to be controlling your own narrative. You don't want to be uh, playing defense on an issue that really plays in uh, to the worst part of her polling, which is that um, a, a majority of voters don't find her honest and trustworthy. So uh, she finds herself at a point really continuing to answer these questions. And I think uh, given what we've seen in the last few days in terms of the news around these emails, she's going to be answering these questions pretty much right up until Election Day. Uh, Jamel, uh, Hillary Clinton appeared last night on Jimmy Kimmel Live where she joked about the matter. I want to play that for our viewers. The State Department, I, I actually added it up today, and the State Department said that they have to release 15,000 emails uh, by the deadline is a couple of days before the debate. Are you concerned about that? No. no you, I mean, they, I would be terrified oh, if my no. emails were <laughs> released. But, I mean, Jimmy, my emails are so boring. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm embarrassed about that. They're so yeah. boring. And <laughs> so we've already released, I don't know, 30,000 plus. So what's a few more? Jamel, is she sort of laughing it off because she's confident that even with these 15,000 emails, uh, they're only going to find emails that are boring, as she says? Or does it look really bad for her to sort of be joking which, with the subject that is so serious in a lot of people's minds? I think the worst of the email scandal has already gone past Clinton. Uh, FBI Director Comey's statement earlier in the summer uh, that both vindicated her and also said, said that she was very reckless in her use of a private email server, I think basically did as much damage as it could possibly do. Um, and that, that is passed. Um, if you look at the actual substance of this email matter, going back to when it was first unveiled last year, there has been little or, or nothing almost with regards to actual scandal. Um, the scandal is that she had the private server. Uh, there's really been nothing in the emails themselves to suggest uh, any, any wrongdoing or any illegal conduct. And so, you know, I probably wouldn't joke about it on Jimmy Kimmel, but all things considered, I just don't really see what, it, what else there is for Clinton to say or do. She's, uh, the FBI has had its word. Um, there's really been nothing of any consequence in these emails uh, for the most part, or nothing that would suggest illegal activity. And that's, that's where we are. And where we are is also that, that both candidates really being found neither honest nor trustworthy, hanging around that 60 percent mark yet. Donald Trump at a rally in Ohio last night calling for a special prosecutor to investigate Clinton right now. We'll take a listen to that. After the FBI and Department of Justice whitewashed Hillary Clinton's email crimes, they certainly cannot be trusted to quickly or impartially investigate Hillary Clinton's new crimes, which happen all the time. The Justice Department is required to appoint an independent special prosecutor because it has proven itself to be really, sadly, a political arm of the White House. Nobody has ever seen anything like this before. Jamel just mentioned this. It's still from this same incident. It's still from that private server. Should the Clinton camp, Steve, be concerned with what Trump is saying right now? How it might play with voters, I guess. Yeah, I think not, not as specifically about the uh, special prosecutor angle, but with voters, absolutely. Uh, I mean, for the last few weeks, she's been sitting there watching Donald Trump uh, commit self-inflicted controversies on himself and really drawing all the attention to all these negative things with him and his campaign. Now this is an opportunity for Trump to really sort of flip the script on Clinton, put her on defense, again, play into a narrative uh, that she's not uh, honest, and also give him an opportunity to energize Republican voters who, as we all have seen over the last 20 or 25 years, they get very energized when there are some negative stories out there about Hillary Clinton. This gets Republicans fired up, and again, an opportunity, I think, it's, uh, it's where Republicans wanted to see Donald Trump uh, weeks ago, going after Clinton on a weakness, uh, and he's hitting her hard on this, and this could get them very, very energized. 
Uh, Jamel, let's uh, talk about uh, some other Trump news. He appears to be softening his tone now on immigration, calling for a fair but firm approach to illegal immigration. Uh, that seems to differ, at least from uh, his previous pledges, of mass deportations, a deportation force. He's also making an appeal to African American voters. Uh, I'm, but I, I want to get your take on whether that appeal will work. I mean, yesterday in Ohio, he likened uh, urban America to a war zone. I mean, I mean, when you look at when you look at the the polling right now, right? Um, Trump is doing about one percent with African Americans in Ohio and Pennsylvania, nine percent in North Carolina. Um, a recent NBC News poll has him with ten percent in Virginia, but another poll from a college in the state has him at four percent. Um, he is doing so poorly with African Americans that he might be on track to do worse than Barry Goldwater in 1964. So, what's to say? I don't think this appeal is really going to work for him. I think it's very hard to imagine a situation in which this appeal, which it's worth noting, is being made in large in front of largely white audiences um, and generally has a tenor of "your lives are horrible, so vote for me." I, I don't think it's really going to make any traction. And I think it's worth looking at kind of the broad context. At both this appeal and his sort of vagueness in immigration and his attempt to flip the script with Clinton, the the broad context here is that Trump is behind by an average of around seven points. He is so far behind at this point that states like Georgia and Arizona are inching towards being swing states, and that the Clinton campaign is opening offices in Utah. So this is, I think, a desperate attempt by Trump and his campaign to to really do whatever it possibly takes to change the subject. And the problem is that Trump is so undisciplined as a politician that any any message he might have that it has an ounce of effectiveness, he quickly steps on it with some sort of outrageous statement or or what have you. So yesterday, he attacked uh, the host of Morning Joe. Um, his statements about voter fraud, all these things step on whatever message he might have. And Jamel, I, I want to ask you, though, about the message, which is if you strip away the bombast, if you strip away the rhetoric, what he has said is, look, if you voted for Democrats in the past, they haven't worked for you. They haven't provided the solutions that you need uh, in the African-American community. So maybe you should take a chance. I mean, he, I think those are the words he used, take a chance. And there is a new poll, um, an NBC News Survey Monkey poll out today uh, that shows uh, support among registered black voters. I think we have that poll there. Um, and it shows Donald Trump at 8 percent um, and Hillary Clinton at 87 percent. So does he have a point, though, with his message, I guess? I mean, I think it depends on uh, how you look at the question, right? Um, plenty of African Americans will say, and I, I've spoken to quite a few on the trail this campaign, that while well, the Democratic Party has not been perfect, you know, A, it was the vehicle for Barack Obama and has been very supportive of Obama that the Democratic Party has tried to work hard nationally um, with policies like the Affordable Care Act and that they don't blame Democrats as much as they blame Republican obstruction. Likewise, on the local level, um, in big cities and so on and so forth, there, there are more contentious relationships, but it's not necessarily one of African Americans looking at Democratic leaders, many of them who are themselves African American and saying that they are somehow out to get us or that they are, uh, are necessarily working directly against us. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure that message penetrates on that level. And I think when you sort of pull back a little more, you know, look, you look at Trump's statement, which is that, you know, black Americans, they have bad schools, they don't have housing, they don't have jobs, they are subject to, you know, nonstop violence. These things aren't actually true. Most black Americans do not live in poverty. Most black Americans uh, do, in fact, own homes. I mean, when you go down the list of indicators, it's not that black America is necessarily doing great, but it's not this dystopian, uh, you know, escape that uh, Trump is describing. And the fact that it's not that, I think, plays against Trump's message, because people will hear this and they will say, this doesn't describe any life that I'm living. Jamel Bowie and Steve Shigaris in Washington, thank you. Thank you.